Greetings and welcome to another Pokemon 2019 or Pokemon Journeys anime episode review. This time I'm talking about episode 131, so let's get to it. Episode 131 begins with Ash's Dragonite flying up high in order to get ready to face Leon's Rillaboom. Rillaboom begins with drum beating, while Dragonite counters with Hurricane. The Hurricane manages to push back the roots and it also hits and suppresses Rillaboom. However, Rillaboom quickly recovers and it uses the roots to guard against the Hurricane, severely reducing its power. Rillaboom then uses the roots to disperse the Hurricane and to pummel Dragonite, who is soon knocked down. Now I honestly thought that this was it for Dragonite, but Dragonite does manage to stand back up. However, Dragonite has its speed lowered because it was hit with drum beating, which does decrease the speed of the opponent in the games. Leon says that whenever he uses a Grass-type Pokémon, his opponent tends to use Flying-type moves against it, which is why he has a counter to this. So, Dragonite uses Kairu Seigun or Dragonite Meteor, which is its official name in English. This was only recently revealed. Rillaboom counters by using drum beating and directing the roots to guard like before. While Dragonite tries to break through, it is ultimately unable to do so, since the roots swat away a bunch of meteors and one root manages to catch Dragonite. Leon says that he knew what Ash would try to do, which is why he and Rillaboom were able to shut down Dragonite completely. Now I love that Professor Oak says that the roots are like Bind Whip, and Bulbasaur, who is definitely an expert on Bind Whip, nods in agreement. So Dragonite is then slammed into the ground by the root that was holding it. However, Dragonite quickly bounces back, and it rushes straight towards Rillaboom. You just have to admire Dragonite's determination and how it refuses to back down. Though I guess that Dragonite might just be angry, since it has been tossed around quite a bit. Dragonite proceeds to use Dragon Claw. However, Rillaboom uses acrobatics to expertly avoid every single attempt Dragonite makes to land a hit. Eventually, Rillaboom ends the scuffle with what is basically an action movie takedown. Rillaboom uses both of its fists together to hit Dragonite on the back. Rillaboom then sweeps Dragonite off its feet with one leg. And finally, Rillaboom uses both hands to palm strike Dragonite. Because of this impressive and skillful beatdown, Dragonite is knocked out. I have to say that this takedown is both very cool and very smooth. Rillaboom definitely knows how to fight up close and personal. Also, it is of course a shame that Dragonite is defeated here, even if I did see it coming. But at least, Dragonite got to put up a fight. Though unfortunately, everything it did was shut down by Rillaboom, which is fair for the most part since Rillaboom is clearly very strong and experienced, though I do feel that the drum beating, a grass-type move, overpowering Hurricane, a flying type move is a little unbelievable. So, Ash sends out his next Pokemon, which is Surfetch. Surfetch begins with Meteor Assault, while Rillaboom counters with high horsepower. I love that Rillaboom retracts its drumstick since it does not need them for high horsepower, and so that it is easier to run, which is important, since it needs to charge towards the opponent. So, Surfetch and Rillaboom clash at full power. While they both seem to be evenly matched, Rillaboom soon begins to push Surfetch back. However, Surfetch does not back down. It stands strong, it pushes back, and it manages to overpower Rillaboom, who takes the full brunt of Meteor Assault. As a result, Rillaboom is knocked back and it crashes into its drum. Ouch, Rillaboom definitely felt that one. Rillaboom is seemingly defeated, since it stays down with its eyes closed for a good while. 
the referee even gets close to Rillaboom to see if Rillaboom is really down for the count. However, surprisingly, Rillaboom manages to stand back up, which shows that it is very resilient. Since Sir Fetch needs to recharge, it is at the mercy of Rillaboom, who proceeds to attack with high horsepower. While Sir Fetch manages to block the initial bash with its shield, it cannot avoid or block a follow-up punch, which sends it flying. However, Sir Fetch quickly recovers and, at the behest of Ash, Sir Fetch rides its shield in order to get back to the fight faster and safer. I really love this tactic. It just looks so cool. Rillaboom counterattacks with drum beating. However, by riding its shield, Sir Fetch manages to avoid the roots and it even serves on some of the roots as well. This allows Sir Fetch to bypass Rillaboom's defenses so that it can get close enough to attack. Once it's close enough, Sir Fetch gets ready to use Fury Cutter. Rillaboom jumps up to intercept Sir Fetch with acrobatics. Sir Fetch dismounts its shield and it goes in for the attack. However, Rillaboom grabs and tosses Sir Fetch's shield like a frisbee. The shield staggers Sir Fetch, which allows Rillaboom to catch Sir Fetch off guard and unable to counter or dodge. And so, Rillaboom lands a super effective hit with acrobatics. While Sir Fetch is left still standing, it is ultimately unable to remain standing for long, despite its best efforts. And so, Sir Fetch is sadly defeated, which broke my heart and it shocked me greatly. I really, really thought that Sir Fetch would defeat Rillaboom, and I was very much hoping for this. I was cheering heavily for Sir Fetch throughout the battle, but unfortunately, Sir Fetch was not able to defeat Rillaboom. This is especially sad because as of this episode, Sir Fetch is the only one of the team that is defeated without getting a knockout, meaning that Sir Fetch ended up contributing less than its peers. Though at least Sir Fetch still got to contribute plenty, since it fought both Mr. Rhyme and Rillaboom, dealing a good amount of damage to both and almost defeating Rillaboom. Sir Fetch also destroyed the psychic terrain, which made things easier for Lucario. So Sir Fetch did not go down without putting up a good fight. But even though Sir Fetch did do plenty, it still could have done more. Namely, get a knockout. It is honestly sad to think that Sir Fetch might end up being the only one of the team that does not get a knockout in the climactic final battle. Now I also want to mention that this episode confirms that Leon's Rillaboom is insanely strong. And I can confidently say that Rillaboom is Leon's strongest Pokemon after Charizard. Not only did it defeat Alon's Chestnut, forcing Alon to bring out Charizard to shut Rillaboom down, but Rillaboom also defeated four of the Anthas Pokemon by itself, and now it managed to defeat two of Ash's Pokemon, something that Mr. Rhyme, Intellion, and Dragapult could not do. Though to be fair, Dragonite and Sir Fetch were both injured. Still, there is no denying that this Rillaboom is cracked. I also want to mention that not only is Sir Fetch the destroyer of harmful things on the battlefield, but it is also the weakener of tough opponents, since it used Meteor Assault to severely injure and almost defeat both Cynthia's Garchomp and Leon's Rillaboom, thus making them easier to defeat. I think that Sir Fetch is the ultimate team player slash support. So, Leon praises Rillaboom for putting up such a good show. This makes Rillaboom happy. Leon then says that this battle 
has allowed him and his Pokemon to show their full potential. However, he is sad, because Ash only has two Pokemon left, meaning that this exciting battle is almost over. Man, talk about counting your Torchic before they are born. Ash says that it's not over till it's over, and he sends out Dracobish, who roars while revealing that its spikes are still transformed, meaning that its new power is still in effect. Dracovish begins with Ice Fang, while Rillaboom counters with Drum Beating. The roots stop Dracovish from advancing further, so Dracovish uses its spikes to force the roots together, which allows them to be torn down in one sweep. Dracovish then proceeds to use Ice Fang to freeze and bite through the roots. This surprisingly staggers and seemingly hurts Rillaboom. I guess that these roots are connected to Rillaboom, which is why it can control them so well and I guess that this also allows it to feel what the roots feel. Seizing the opportunity, Dracovish charges forth with Dragon Rush. Rillaboom recovers and it counters with high horsepower. Dracovish and Rillaboom then crash into each other like two locomotives going at full speed. I love that the energy of the Dragon Rush shoots up into the sky while roaring. This is very epic and cool. And it is worth mentioning that this also happened during Ash's battle with Drasna. I also love that when Dracovish was charging towards Rillaboom with Dragon Rush, Surfetch in a ready-to-charge-forward stance, was overlaid over Dracovish. This represents that Dracovish is carrying the will and the spirit of its friend Surfetch, who, like I said earlier, left Rillaboom close to defeat. So Dracovish is finishing what Surfetch started. This is extra meaningful because Surfetch used a move that requires charging towards the opponent in order to severely injure Rillaboom. And this is the same kind of move that Dracovish is using here. And it's extra extra meaningful because Surfetch and Dracovish learned these two moves together in the same episode. It's for these reasons that Surfetch is shown here. And specifically in this stance. Also, like I said earlier, Surfetch really is the ultimate team player slash support. Because after destroying the psychic terrain, Surfetch was swapped out for Lucario. And Surfetch shared a figurative high five with Lucario. Symbolizing that Surfetch did its job of setting up the stage for the opponent's defeat. And it is leaving the rest to its ally. Showing Surfetch here with Dracovish also symbolizes that what Surfetch did was not for naught. Instead, it created an opportunity that is later seized by one of its allies. Surfetch is pretty much the unsung hero slash MVP, which earns it a lot of respect. So after the smoke clears, it is revealed that Dracovish and Rillaboom are both still standing. While Rillaboom refuses to go down, to the point that it even holds on to Dracovish hard enough to extinguish some of the energy Dracovish has in its spikes, Rillaboom is ultimately unable to remain standing for long. And so, it falls and it is knocked out. Now I love that Rillaboom doesn't just fall down. Instead, it slides down and Dracovish does not budge. So it feels like Rillaboom charged straight into a wall. So when the two locomotives ran into each other at full speed, one of them clearly ran into a brick wall instead. Also, Dracovish deserves a medal for defeating this insanely strong Rillaboom. Though again, Rillaboom was hurt severely by Surfetch, so perhaps Dracovish cannot take all the credit. Now I love that the episode cuts away from the battle 
to show that Clement and Bonnie are watching the finals. It is of course nice to see them again, and it's fitting that they are shown here, since they were there when Dracovish and the Sir Fetch learned Dragon Rush and Meteor Assault respectively. Clement even assisted them with learning the moves. So Leon sends out Cinderace as his next Pokemon. Cinderace begins with High Jump Kick. Now I love the stance Cinderace takes to use High Jump Kick. I have always thought that Cinderace would have been right at home back in the days where every fire type starter ended up with fighting as its secondary type. And this moment right here shows that this is really true. So Dracovish ends up taking the high jump kick head on. Strangely, Dracovish does not even try to dodge. While it is knocked down, Dracovish soon gets up and it roars, to show that it is still raring to go. Dracovish then uses Water Gun, while Cinderace counters with Pyro Ball. Both moves clash and they cancel each other out. Dracovish then uses Fish's Rend, but Cinderace counters with Iron Head and it manages to hit Dracovish before Dracovish can strike. Dracovish soon recovers and Ash wonders if Dracovish is fine. Dracovish says that it is and it shows that it is determined to keep battling. Dracovish then uses Dragon Rush while Cinderace counters with High Jump Kick. I love that this time you can clearly hear Cinderace shouting like a classic martial artist. This shout is an actual technique called the Kiai, and it is synonymous with martial arts in popular culture. Having Cinderace do this is a nice touch. So Cinderace leaps over Dracovish, avoiding the Dragon Rush in the process. Cinderace then delivers the high jump kick by landing knee first onto Dracovish, who is unfortunately knocked out. Now since I expected that Rillaboom would defeat Dragonite, Surfetch would defeat Rillaboom, Cinderace would defeat Surfetch, Dracovish would defeat Cinderace, Charizard would defeat Dracovish, and then Pikachu would face Charizard, I was, like I stated before, very surprised by the fact that Surfetch was defeated by Rillaboom, and I honestly thought, while watching the episode, that Dracovish would go on to defeat both Rillaboom and the Cinderace, thus leaving Ash and Leon with one Pokemon each and leading to the expected final showdown of Pikachu vs Charizard. So I was very surprised when I saw that Cinderace defeats Dracovish, which leaves Ash with just Pikachu, while Leon has both Cinderace and the Charizard. I really thought that Dracovish would be the MVP, by taking down two opponents. Not only because this would have led to the expected outcome, but also because I believed in Dracovish's new power. Unfortunately though, Dracovish did not get to be the MVP, and it is a shame that it did not get to use its new power that much. In this episode, it only got to use it once and only against Rillaboom. Now this episode continued to surprise me, since Leon then decides to withdraw Cinderace. I was confident at this point that Pikachu would take down Cinderace, thus leaving Leon with just a Charizard. But nope, Leon would draw Cinderace and he sends out Charizard, meaning that Leon gets to have Cinderace in reserve should the Charizard fall, which is of course a tall order. At this point, I began to worry about Ash and his odds of winning. Ash says that he is counting on Pikachu and that Leon wants to end the battle with Charizard. Pikachu then proceeds to enter the field. Now I love that Ash's own Charizard, Infernape, Pignite, Gliscor, and Professor Oak are all shocked when they see Leon's Charizard. I guess that they are surprised because Leon has a Charizard as well. I would love to know 
what Ash's Charizard is thinking here. So, Leon says that Charizard was his first Pokemon, and that Charizard is his irreplaceable partner that has always traveled with him and that has been there for everything and anything. Ash says that he can say the same thing about Pikachu, which is why he wants to defeat Charizard with Pikachu. Leon then smiles, he withdraws Charizard, he says that because of what he just said, he will win. And he proceeds to Gigantamax Charizard, which is yet another surprise. I did not expect that Leon would Gigantamax Charizard right away. So, Pikachu is soon faced with Gigantamax Charizard. Pikachu begins with Thunderbolt. However, Charizard uses Max Rockfall, which forces Pikachu to jump before he can fire off the Thunderbolt. Pikachu does manage to leap over the giant slab of rock. However, the additional effect of Max Rockfall, which is to summon a Sandstorm, kicks in, and the Pikachu is hit by the Sandstorm, which prevents him from using Thunderbolt. Now, while this is referred to as a Sandstorm, I really would not call it one, since it does not linger. Instead, Pikachu is hit by a barrage of splinters of rock surrounded by sand or dust. Despite taking damage, Pikachu's momentum is not halted, and he ends up above Charizard. Pikachu then uses Iron Tail, but while he lands a clean hit, Charizard is completely unfazed. Charizard then uses Max Worm Wind, which lands a direct hit on Pikachu. However, somehow, I guess due to pure willpower, Pikachu is able to withstand the Max Worm Wind. Ash realizes that Gigantamax is too powerful, and that the only way they can stand up against it is to use their C move. So he tosses his cap to Pikachu and they begin to cast their C move. Leon smiles and he exclaims that he was waiting for this. Now I love that while Ash and Pikachu perform the poses needed to unleash their C-move, the episode cuts to the Pokemon school in Alola, to show that Ash's Alola team, Kukui, Burnett, Lei, Lana, Malo, Sophocles, Lilie, Kiawi, their Pokemon, Rotom, Gladian, and Samson Oak are all watching the finals. It is of course very nice to see all these characters again, and it is fitting that they are shown when Ash and Pikachu are about to fire off their C-move. So, Pikachu uses 10 million Bolt Thunderbolt, while Charizard counters with G-Max Wildfire. Both moves clash, creating a massive cluster of energy that creates a pillar of light that shoots up into the sky, which soon shatters. The entire stadium is also shaken, with shockwaves echoing throughout it, and the battlefield also shatters. Leon exclaims that this is perfect, that he always wanted to try this, Gigantamax versus a C-move. Ash exclaims that he also wanted to try this. The two of them then smile, showing just how much fun they are having. The cluster of energy created by the clash of the two moves soon expands as more energy is fed to it by Pikachu and the Charizard, who refuse to back down in the struggle of power. This makes lightning shoot out from the cracks in the sky. Now I have to say that I absolutely love this clash between 10 million Bolt Thunderbolt and G-Max Wildfire not only because it is insanely epic, especially this shot where the camera spins around Pikachu and the Charizard as they give everything they have, but also because of the effect this clash has on the stadium, the environment, the audience, and on Ash and Leon. So the episode then cuts to the energy plant located below Hammerlock. Professor Magnolia is here with two others, studying Eternatus, who is currently behind glass. A strange reaction of Galar particles is soon detected, which 
surprises Professor Magnolia, who wonders what is going on, saying that nothing like this has been observed before. Agitated, Eternatus soon shatters the glass that houses it, and it fires off a Dynamax cannon which allows it to break free, and it flies away, leaving behind a concerned Professor Magnolia, who wonders if another darkest the day is upon them. The episode then cuts back to Windon Stadium, where the cluster of energy created by the clash between 10 million Bolt Thunderbolt and G-Max Wildfire soon causes a massive explosion that pushes back Pikachu and the Charizard as it returns to normal. The sky is left in shambles, with lightning erupting out of it. The dark clouds summoned by Gigantamax remain, even though Charizard returned to normal, and a bunch of Galar particles float around. Sonya says that the space around the stadium was likely altered by the clash between a C-move and the Gigantamax, on top of the energy released by Mega Evolution. Eternatus soon arrives and it hovers over the stadium. The episode ends with Ash, Leon, Pikachu, Charizard and everyone else in the stadium looking up, wondering what is happening and why Eternatus is here. So overall, I think that this episode was insanely good, pretty much on par with the previous one, if not better. Part of the reason why I loved it so much is that it had surprised me a lot, since most of my predictions, even those I made while watching the episode, were proven wrong. Just like I expected, Dragonite was defeated by Rillaboom after putting up a good fight. While I do think that it is a bit unbelievable that Drum Beating was able to neutralize everything that Dragonite did, at least Dragonite was not instantly defeated and it got to do its best. I really thought that Surfetch would defeat Rillaboom and I very much wanted this to happen, which is why I was very sad and surprised when Surfetch was defeated by Rillaboom. Surfetch is currently the only one of the team to go down without a knockout, which is a shame. At least, Surfetch was able to almost defeat Rillaboom, with a very powerful Meteor Assault, and I love how Surfetch surfed on its shield. This episode also exemplified that the Surfetch really is the pillar of the team. So while it is a shame that Surfetch did not defeat Rillaboom, at least, Surfetch put up a great fight. Dracovish was amazing since it was able to defeat Rillaboom and in a very cool way to boot, channeling the spirit of Surfetch in order to deliver a powerful dragon rush that even shot up into the sky with a roar. Dracovish then went on to do fairly well against the Cinderace, who was just so cool when it was battling, constantly changing its type with some very cool moves. It is a shame though, that Dracovish did not get to use its new power that much. Pikachu vs G-Max Charizard was unfortunately way too short, but what we got was at least very cool, especially the big clash between 10 million Bolt Thunderbolt and G-Max Wildfire, which even shattered the sky and it made Eternatus break out of containment. I also love that we got to see so many characters return in this episode, even if they only appeared briefly. So yeah, overall, this episode was amazingly good. I was honestly on the edge of my seat the entire time, because I did not know what would happen. Any battle slash episode that can make me feel like this is certainly awesome. But that's the video, as always, leave your own thoughts down in the comments below, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did and would like to see more like it, then please consider subscribing to my channel. I love Pokemon and I love making videos on both the anime and the games. Also, please consider clicking the links on screen so that you can check out more videos like this right away. Thank you very much for watching and let's meet again in the next video.